Hey y'all, we are back again for another cooking video. This time I've got a guest in the kitchen. It's your boy, Wesley. And are you gonna Martin. are you gonna do any cooking today, Wes? Uh, no, but I will be helping you out. Alright, Wes sprained his hand playing football. Yep. So he's gonna be out for the season. But he'll make it. Does it hurt, buddy? Uh only a little bit. You know, I just gotta throw some dirt on there and just tough it up, you know? Throw some dirt. You get your spin on it and wrap it in duct tape. You're good? Exactly. Yeah. All right. All right, y'all. Look, we're going to have stewed beef today. And what I have right here is a chuck roast. It's like two and a half pounds. I'm going to cut this up into bite-sized cubes so they'll cook quick and it'll, it'll, it'll cook quickly and it'll tenderize it a lot faster instead of just cooking the whole thing. I'm going to use some a medium onion. I've got a beef bouillon cube and I'm going to use like a teaspoon maybe two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce. Now, Wesley hates onions, so I'm going to really dice this up really super fine for him, so in the cooking process, it disappears. This is one of my favorite meals right here. This reminds me of um, my mama when she used to cook uh, stew beef and rice, and my grandma used to cook it the same way. It's very simple. It's very, very good. Do you like it? I think it's very, like... I love it. It's besides the onions, I mean, usually you just cook them out, but besides the onions, it's really good. You like the way it tastes? Yeah. And uh, you can use rice or mashed potatoes. Uh, we're accustomed to using rice, so that's what we're going to have with this today. So, I'm going to get right to it, y'all. So, we're going to go ahead and cut our meat up here. Wesley's going to hold the camera. Since you, you guys never get to see me actually do any work, you know, it's, it's always done. And then I come back. We're going to cut the meat up into bite-sized pieces. Try to make them as uniform as possible. So we can, um, it uh, this will all cook at the same time. And I got to tell you, I know I've talked about this before, guys, but this Eihoven blade, it's amazing. There's a ton of connected, connective tissue in this roast with all the uh, the fat and the sinew and this cuts through it like butter. Let's see that blade? Literally. Let's see it real quick. It's it's kind of nasty man. But still. Blade cuts like a charm. It does. We just did a couple Facebook live um, skits you know with this blade and how easily it cuts. I mean look at that. It just goes right through the connective tissue and there's a ton of it in this roast, obviously. But it makes everything so simple. I love it. I can't, I want to share this with y'all because I want you to have a great knife. And this doesn't just go for meat. This goes for like any kind of thing you want to cut up for cooking like celery, carrots, tomatoes, onions, all that sort of stuff. It's, it's, yeah. This is a great knife. It's a chopper. It's a slicer. It's a dicer. It's a, uh, you know, all-purpose knife. Very hard, very sharp. I, you know, I can't say enough about it. But, so we're almost done here. We're going to go ahead and get the onion cut up. And look at that, man. That is so awesome. Look. I love that. All right, here's the last piece. There's a ton of fat right there in connective tissue. We're not getting rid of that, though, because yeah, that that's what is the, the flavor. flavor. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I just cut my finger. I'm just kidding. So, this is half of that roast. Here's the other half we've already cut up. We put it in the back. We're going to put it in the freezer. You know, have this for a later date. So, we're on to step two. We're cutting up the onion. Cool. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and cut this onion up. Wesley cut this up all on his own with a broke or a sprained hand. And uh, we did a couple Facebook Live uh, posts for him and his friends. Look at this. I mean, it just cuts like butter. I love it. I love this blade. And this goes to show how good it cuts with uh, fruits and veggies, too. Oh, God. I love the smell of onions, man. I don't know how you don't like this. Uh, I don't like the smell of onions. Look at this, y'all. Look at that. Look at that. So we got our onions. We got our meat. We're going to go ahead and start cooking, y'all. Let's do it. We are ready to cook. We've got our little precision cooktop at 375. Wes, you want to go ahead and dump that meat in? Let's do it. We're gonna get a nice sear. Try to get a sear on all sides. Just go ahead and, and put it in there, buddy. There you go. Now, 
yeah, take this spoon and try to get all the, you know, we want every surface or every piece of meat touching. We want to get a sear on it. If they're already on, down like that, just, yeah, just move them around. They'll want to stick initially, and that's fine, but they're going to get a really nice sear, and when we come back to move them around, they'll be easy to move. Good job, man. Thank you. All right, Wes, I'm going to hold this for you. I know you got one hand. Go ahead and turn it. You can always smell when you got a nice sear on there. Look look at that right there. Because it, it almost, it's going to almost smell like it's going to start burning. And what you're doing is you're like creating really nice uh, flavor on the bottom of the pan. Good job, man. You're doing a good job. Awesome. All right. All right, that's good, Wes. We're going to let this sear on this side here, and then we'll add our onions. We've got a beautiful sear on that meat. Let me get in close so you can see. Oh, whoa, watch out there. Watch out, man. That's beautiful. And, and you can see down here in the bottom, Wes, see all this brown stuff? Oh, yeah, what is that? Dude, that's like flavor. That's from Flavor Town, as the guy from Food TV said. All right, let's put in the onions, man. Oh, uh, what's his name? Bob Perry or something? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we're going to go ahead and uh, mix those around. Yeah. We want to hold the pan for me there? Yeah, I got you. We want to make sure that these um, caramelize. So what will happen is, you, you know, you'll notice when they start turning brown, kind of turning translucent and then start turning brown, that is when we go to our next step. But at this step, dude, what you're going to want to do is add your salt and pepper. And I'll do that off camera because people always say, you know, they're like salt. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So we'll be back with the next step here just, well, right now. So you can see our onions are just about where we need them. Wes, you asked me what the brown stuff was in the bottom of the pan, right? Yeah. That's basically caramelized sugar that comes from the meat mm -hmm. and also the onions. Now, yeah. buddy, our next step, we're going to go ahead and add in our water. No, uh, we'll water save that. Mm -hmm. So we got two cups of water. We're going to pour just right in there. Let me turn the fan off here. Oh. Yeah, go ahead, man. Add it. Thing. Yum. Nice. So I'm guessing we're going to go ahead and add our Worcestershire sauce. Yep, Worcestershire. Put that in there. That's about two tablespoons. Just enough. You don't really want to taste it at all. And what we have right there, Wes, is our beef bouillon cube. I kind of minced it up for you because I know you got one hand and you couldn't do it. So just dump it in and we're going to stir it around. Nice. Perfect. Now, I'll hold this while you stir. And you know, that all the uh, caramelized sugars on the bottom of the pan, the stuff that's flavor. In the water, absorb in the water. Exactly. What you want to do is with your spoon, you want to scrape the bottom of the pan. So I'm guessing that's going to add a lot of flavor. It's going to add a lot of flavor, man. It's good. We always love flavor in our food. Yeah. All right, so that's it for now. We're gonna let this this initial two cups of water boil out. We're gonna keep an eye on it. We're gonna turn our heat down to maybe 300. Okay, we're gonna let it boil down un uncovered. And when we're gonna come back and add two more cups of water and we'll almost be there. Oh my goodness, that smells so incredible. Wes, the onions are just about cooked out of there, man. So we've let this cook down again to where it's almost to the point of frying again. We're gonna add two more cups of water. Maybe three. I'm gonna add another cup in a minute here after we're off camera. I'm gonna scrape the bottom of the pan again. Look at all that. That's not from the Worcestershire, guys. That's from caramelized sugar. So this is gonna be amazing. So we'll add another cup of water to this. We'll continue to let it simmer. We're gonna let it reduce by half. That's gonna be ready to go. In the meantime, we're gonna step over here. We've got some butter in, in the pan here. I've got the, the burner on medium here. Wes has got his cup of rice. Wes, you wanna go ahead and put your rice in here? We're gonna let this toast a little bit in the butter. For the sake of time, man. We're just gonna say we did. Now, I want, I want to tell you this. One thing about rice, 
is it's always a ratio of one to three. So if you okay. use like one cup of rice, you'd have to use three cups of water. Exactly. If you used half a cup of rice, how I'm much? I'm not good at math. All right. <laughs> it don't matter. Just... All right, it'd be a cup and a half. All right. All right. Go ahead and add your water to this, buddy. It'll just be a little buttery instead of toasty. But what you guys would want to do at home is obviously, you know, toast your rice in that butter, stir it around a little bit. You're good to go. All right. All right. You're perfect right there, Wes. We're going to bring this up to a boil, okay? And then when it starts to boil or a really hard simmer, we're going to turn the temperature down to a very light simmer. And we don't need to touch it anymore until all the water is out of it. And then we're done, dude. Cool. All right. So next time you see us, y'all. We are going to be eating some of this deliciousness over some of that. Let's get it. All right, we finished. We are finished. Wes, you can take, I'll take the rosemary off for you. It was just a, a garnish. Dig in, man. Enjoy. Enjoy all of the stew beef. It's super hot, man. Let me get down and see if we can see some steam coming off of it. Oh, probably not now, but it is like super hot. How is it? Is it is it salty enough? You need yep. some salt on that rice? I forgot to put salt in there, uh, you know, on our original step. Still good. Is it awesome? Mm -hmm. I had to go back and put it in there. Anyway. The uh, gravy from like the meat really gives it the flavor. You know what? Rice. You know what makes it so good? The uh, the sugar stuff. The onions, dude. The oh, onions. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> it's the onions, man. I'm telling you. You don't oh. like them now, but you wait. You're going to like them, man. You, I can. Is the meat tender? Mm -hmm. It is? It's good. Awesome. I'm glad you like it, dude. This is perfect for uh, a cold day. You know, it's just great for a cold day. You can make this ahead of time, take it to any football event, any sporting event outdoors. It's just wonderful. Hey, man. You know, it's been really nice having you back in the kitchen with me. It's been a long, long time, hasn't it? Mm-hmm. You know, look, you don't realize it now, but one day, you're going to really appreciate having these videos up oh, there yeah. on Facebook. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Yeah. I have been um, very blessed to have you as a son, man. Thank you. Very, very blessed to be your dad. I love you. Love you, too. All right, well, that's our little stewed beef video. So until next time, it's Pat and Wes, and we're at your service.